Hello, and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the accounting equation, the famous accounting equation. The most important thing in understanding the accounting equation is understanding its components. So what we're going to do, how we're going to tackle this issue is by looking at assets, understanding assets, then we're going to discuss liabilities, then we're going to discuss stockholders' equity. I will explain each one of them separately, then I'll put them in the equation to make sense of things. This equation is the foundation for your financial accounting course, for your intermediate accounting course, for all of your accounting career. So you want to have a really strong foundation in the accounting equation before you start learning about accounting. Now, before I start, I would like to remind you that if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, I can help you on my website, farhatlectures.com. I do have resources for your financial accounting, managerial accounting, intermediate accounting, so on and so forth. But if you are studying for your CPA exam, I do have resources that supplement your CPA review course. No, I don't replace your CPA review course. What I can do, I can supplement or I can help you with your financial accounting course on my website, I do have additional resources that's going to help you in addition to the lectures, some practice questions that's going to help you reinforce that knowledge. And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well is your university doing on the CPA exam. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so and check out my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's go ahead and start to discuss the accounting equation. So this equation underlies the framework for recording and summarizing economic event, which we will see later. What we're saying is assets, all your assets must equal to your liabilities plus stockholders equity, which we'll prove that shortly. And if a business is liquidated, claims of creditors, liabilities must be paid before ownership claim stockholders equity are paid. And once we use some numbers, we'll see what does that mean. So the best way to explain the accountant equation, in my opinion, is to break each component separately from the equation, explain it, then put the whole thing together and see how it all fits. So we're going to start by looking at the term asset. What is an asset? So what is an asset? So you need to know what is an asset. Assets are resources. Are resources a business own, owns or control? And they don't have to own the asset as long as they can control it. What does that mean? Let's assume, so I'm going to give you an example, although we haven't properly defined asset. Let, I'm going to tell you a vehicle, let's a truck is an asset. I'll explain why in a moment. You can own the truck or you can control the truck. What do I mean by control? You might, you might be using this truck, but the truck is in the name of the bank. The bank still owns the title. But as long as you can use the truck, then you're in good shape. It's an asset. So you don't have to own the asset as long as you can control it. Because you might have a building, but there's a mortgage. There's a loan against that building. So who owns the building? Really, the bank owns the building because you have a loan against it. But you can use the building, therefore it's an asset. So assets are resources. Things, things that the company own and control. For what purpose? Why do you acquire assets? to provide future services or benefit to the company. So the company wants to benefit itself. They want to generate profit. They want to increase their assets more. So what they do, they utilize their assets to increase their assets. So you would use this truck to make deliveries, just as an example. And by making the deliveries, you make profit. And by making profit, profit is cash, cash is an asset. So some examples of ca cash and some examples not of cash. Some examples of assets are cash, supplies, equipment, land, building, inventory. So any resource that's going to provide, and the keyword is future benefit. And I, I'm going to underline this. I'm going to highlight this, actually. I'm going to highlight the word future because it's important. Let me highlight the word future in yellow. So notice I highlight the word future to kind of keep reminding you that it's an asset if it's going to provide you future benefit. Okay? Because sometimes you buy something and you pay for something, but it doesn't provide you future benefit. We're going to call it something else. So a fundamental aspect of asset is its future benefit. Yes, if you have supplies, you're going to use them in the future. If you have a piece of equipment, if you have a computer, if you have cash, you could use it for the future to benefit the business. Okay, so this is what assets are. Liabilities. What are liabilities? Simply put, hopefully we are all familiar with the term debt. 
liabilities are debt. Simply put, it's a debt. Some you owe someone money. Debt. That's one word for liabilities. Or you can say another word is obligations. So let's take a look at the definition of a liability. Okay? The definition of liabilities are claims against asset. So someone has a claim. Claim means they can claim their asset. They can say, give me back my money. They have a claim against their asset. Why? Why do you have a claim against asset? Why someone has a claim against asset? Because in the past, they lend you money. That could be an example. They lend you money. Or in the past, you purchased from them something. You purchased on account. What does it mean you purchase on account? It means you bought something. You bought goods and services from someone, but you did not pay them. You did not pay them. Therefore, what, what's going to happen now? They have a claim against your asset. They, they're saying, you need to pay me back. So you have an obligation. You have an obligation to pay them. Why? Because as a result of a past transaction. But what else you need to know about liabilities? It has a future aspect. What's the future aspect? You have to pay in the future. You have to pay. So really, if you really think about it, a liability has three time frame. As a present time frame, present means you have an obligation now because of something happened in the past that would require you to make a payment in the future. And that's what a liability is. You have an obligation now because of something happened in the past, you have to pay it in the future. And and, and liabilities are claims. Basically, someone like the bank is claiming that, they, that you owe them money or you purchased supplies from someone from staples and you did not pay them yet. So they have a claim against your asset. Usually liabilities are provided to you by creditors, party to whom money is owed. Again, when we think about creditor, we think about bank, but also your suppliers could be your creditors because they're selling you material on account. Now for the purpose of an introductory uh, uh, course and for the purpose of just looking at the first chapter, you need to be familiar with two liabilities and those are called accounts payable and notes payable. There are many other liabilities, but those are important for you to start the course. What is accounts payable is when you purchase material, goods, and services on account. It means you purchase them now and you're going to pay your supplier later. Notes payable, notes payable is a fancy word for a loan. Notes payable means you borrowed money from someone. You borrowed money from someone. When we talk about notes payable, when you borrow money, there's always interest rate involved. So we'll talk about this in a later chapter, how to account for notes payable. But that's the main difference between a notes and an accounts payable. Notes payable involve interest because you're borrowing money. The reason it's called a note, because they make you sign a note sign a paper saying you're going to be paying us this money in the um in the uh in the in, in the future not in the past in the future so um so assets liabilities equal to stockholders equity let me um i'm going to insert a new screen and we'll talk about this so let's talk about assets let's assume now we know what assets are let's assume assets let's put the accounting equation first here equal to liabilities plus equity. I'm just going to call it equity, but it's stockholders equity for short. So let's assume we have $300,000 of assets. We have $200,000 in liabilities. Okay. 200,000 in liabilities. Therefore, by process, you know, by, you know, by process uh, of, of computation, equity equal to 100,000. So we can say equity equal to 100,000. If we rearrange the formula, if we want to say what equity equal to, we can rearrange the formula by saying assets. Assets minus liabilities equal to equity. So simply put, if you have assets of 300,000 minus liabilities of 200,000, you will get equity of 100,000. So we, okay. Basically, we're saying the same thing. I just rearranged the formula. But by, by rearranging the formula, I hopefully you are starting to notice a few things. One is, one way to define equity is to call it net assets. So one way to define equity is net asset. And what's as net asset? Net asset, same thing as equity. Asset minus liabilities. Or another way to say what equity is, it's the difference. Another way to define between assets 
and liabilities. So I, I didn't really see anything new so far because that's what it is, net asset or the difference between asset and liabilities. What does that mean? If you have $300,000 in assets, let's assume all this asset is cash, just to kind of illustrate the point. You have $300,000 in cash and you have 200,000 in liabilities, which is basically a loan at the bank. What does that mean? It means you can go to the bank, pay off the loan. You have 300,000, pay off the loan. And what you're left with is 100,000, what I call free and clear free and clear free and clear it means no one has any claims against this 100,000 because you paid off your loan basically I can say that's your value if this is the how much you are this is how much it's clear then I would say this is your value so your value is 100,000 or I can say this is your net worth net worth means if you pay off all your liabilities if you make if you pay off all the people that have claims against you how much can you walk away with free and clear it's your net worth and for a business, if we take all their assets, use them to pay off the li pay off all the liabilities, whatever is left is how much is the company is worth. So this is what equity is. So hopefully you understand what's equity from this simple computation. But we're going to talk about equity a little bit further. So what is a stockholder's equity? Again, as we said, it's the difference between assets minus liabilities equal to stockholder's equity. Ownership claim on total asset. Ownership means what? It means the person that owns the company. Okay. If you own the company, remember that example, we said 300,000 minus 200,000 equal to stockholders equity of 100,000. This is the numbers that we used. If you are the owner of this company, let's assume also to make it simple, you are 100% owner of the company. If you own this company 100%, it means your company is worth to you $100,000 because you can walk away free and clear with this $100,000. This is also referred to another term for this value, this $100,000 value is also called residual equity. Whoops, residual equity. So you have many words for equity. We said it's, we can call this, we can call this net asset. We can call it net worth. Usually net worth is for the individual, not for businesses. And we also can call it residual equity, or we can call it another word for it. You see, you might see it in some textbook residual value so the residual value means how much left of value residual value that the owners can walk away free and clear okay now we have to look at four things that affect equity which is don't worry about this we'll come back to this statement later there are four things that affect equity four different things four and we're going to define each one of them separately and explain them four different basically four different activities four different activities or account or whatever you want to call them. Four different things affect equity. They're listed here. One, I'm going to start this one. I'm going to say this is one. I'm going to call this as two. I'm just, I, I did them this on purpose. Don't worry about this. So revenues, expenses, uh, three and four, because this is how I'm going to explain them. This is how I'm going to explain them. How do they affect equity? So all those investment by stockholders, revenues, dividend, and expenses, those are affect stockholders' equity. I'm going to start by talking about revenues. So what are revenues? So let's talk about revenues. So this is the first one I told you I'm going to talk about. What are revenues? So if somebody asks you to define revenues, what are revenues? Revenues result from business activities entered into for the purpose of earning income, for the purpose of earning, uh, we call it income or profit, actually earning assets, earning more assets. So what is revenue really? It's what the company does on a day-to-day -day basis to increase their asset, to increase their profit. Now, if you really think about any uh, about a company, and I always use the same company, which is I like Wawa. It's it's basically if you never heard of Wawa, that's fine. Wawa is a convenience store and a gas station. So Wawa, what do they do? They sell food. They sell gasoline. So the revenue is sales revenue. That's what they do. They make sales, and as they make sales their assets go up. You pay them money, their assets go up. So they that's what they do to increase their income, to increase their revenues, to increase their profit. They make sales. Now, certain companies, they charge you a fee. For example, LA Fitness. LA Fitness, it's it's a gym. And how do they, how do they, how do they, how do they uh, generate money? They charge you a fee. Every month, if you want to join, they charge you a fee, and that's their revenue. Also, 
a company could have a service revenue. For example, a doctor, that's what they do. A plumber, an accountant, they charge you per hour. They provide you a service. That's, that's the revenue, their service revenue. You could also have revenues from interest and dividend. For example, banks, how do banks generate revenue? They lend you money and they generate revenue from interest. How do investment companies make money? They invest in stocks and receive dividend. How do owners of property rent? Uh, how do the owners of property make revenue? They rent the property, they make revenues. So this is what revenues are. Revenues increases a stockholder's equity. Each company will have different source of revenue. You could have more than one source of revenue, but usually it's you have one or two main sources. Revenue increases stockholders' equity. Okay, hopefully we all know what revenues are. Basically activities, for example, the college that you are attending, they charge students tuition, and that's the revenue. So what's the, what's the revenue for colleges? It's the tuition. They charge you tuition, and by, 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 the, by charging you tuition, tuition, so by charging you tuition, what they do is they generate revenue, tuition revenue, okay? That's tu tuition revenue. So different businesses will have different revenues. The next topic we're gonna look at is, on purpose I skip and I went to expenses. So the next topic is expenses. We talked about revenues, let's talk about expenses. What are expenses? Expenses are cost of assets consumed, consumed or services used in the, in the process of earning revenue. What does that mean? Expenses, are the consumption of asset and usually what do you consume you can oops what do you usually consume you consume cash you consume cash to run your business to run your business on a day-to-day -day basis you need you need to pay your utilities you need to pay your employees you need to pay your rent you need to pay taxes you need to pay tax you need to pay insurance so those are called expenses it's the cost basically expenses cost to operate the business and I'm gonna, on day-to-day -day basis, on day-to-day -day basis. So you need to pay for to operate the business. You need to pay your employees, you need to pay your utilities, so on and so forth. So salaries, expenses, an example, rent expense, utilities, tax expense, they're all right here, insurance expense. A company could have a lot of expenses, a lot of expenses. Now, it's very important to differentiate between an asset and an expense. Why? Because both, they kind of sound, sound as if they are serving the same purpose. In what sense? In both of them, you are consuming money. You are consuming money. So why when we consume money, we call something an asset, and why we, when we consume, some, consume money, we call it an expense? When we consume money and we have a future benefit from that future benefit, then it's an asset. An example will be a piece of equipment or a vehicle or a truck for the company. When we buy the truck, guess what? The truck will serve the company for several years. Therefore, it's an asset. When we, when we pay our utilities, when we pay our utilities, think about it. When do you pay your utilities? You pay your utilities after actually you consume the utilities. So you consume, you consume electricity, you consume water, then the company will send you a bill for what you consumed. So you have to pay the bill, but there's no future benefit. No future benefit. If there's no future benefit for your expenditure, for your cost, then it's an expense. It's a way to operate your business. That's, it's very important to differentiate what is an asset and what's an expense because they both consume cash at the end of the day. They both consume resources. And that resource, I'm going to say cash, eventually you're going to have to pay everything in cash. So the point to make is you are consuming asset cash. Okay, so it's very important to, to differentiate between those two. Now, we're going to move into a new, uh, uh, basically, we're going to move into a new formula. So it, since we know revenues, we know it's expenses, we need to build, we need to, to build the formula from those two. So we said revenues, we already defined revenues. So let's go ahead and let me change the color here. Let's assume a company generated of generated four hundred thousand dollars in revenues, and they have they incurred expenses of one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, for I'm just gonna put year ended, and don't worry, we'll talk about this later on. Twenty nineteen for year ended twenty nineteen. 
Revenues minus expenses. When we take the revenues minus the expenses, we'll get 250,000. 400,000 minus 150 equal to 250. What do we call this number? We call this number net income or net profit. So this is a computation. It's called either net income or net profit. So it's very important to know that the difference between revenues and expenses equal to net income or net profit. Okay, so there's a relationship between those two. You want to make sure you are aware of this formula because it's going to come back and you will see it later. So simply put, when we generate revenues, our equity goes up. When we generate expenses, our equity goes down. So revenues increase equity, expenses reduces equity. What else could affect equity? I said four things. I defined two. Let me define the third one. So I said revenues one. Oops. We said revenues one. We already did this. Let me go back here. We said revenues. This is the first one. We defined expenses. The third one is investment by stockholders. In investment by stockholders, they increase stockholders' equity. They increase stockholders' equity. What are investment by stockholders? Investment by stockholder represent total amount paid by stockholders for the shares they purchase. Stockholders are also called owners. They're also called shareholders. They're also called investors. Okay. What does that mean? It means someone likes the company and what they do. If you like a company, if you are an investor, if you are an investor and if you like the company, if you like this company, what do you do? You give them money. You invest in the company. Now, you invest in the company with the hope of the company paying you back part of the profit. But this is what you do. When you invest in the company, you give them money. They give you back something called common stock. And what is common stock? It's ownership interest. They give you shares, ownership interest. Okay? For example, you invest a million dollars. They'll give you just, you know, 1,000 shares. And those 1,000 shares may, might represent 10% of the company. It doesn't matter. All what I'm saying is you need to understand what investment by stockholder is. Investment by stockholders is when the owner contribute. contribute. It's called also contributed capital. Let me just put the word here. Contributed capital. So this is, it means, capital means money. It's money coming from owners. Why do owners want to invest? Because they like the business. Okay? So this is what investment by owner is. It represents this. Now, so we talked about three pieces that increase uh, that affect equity. The fourth piece is dividend to stockholders. And remember, stockholders put money into the company, the equity goes up. Then the stockholders, what do they expect? They expect to be paid. So the stockholder expect to be paid. When the company makes a profit, they expect that they don't have to be paid if the company decide to pay them. And we'll talk about dividend way, way, much, much more later on down the road, but dividend are distribution of cash or other assets to stockholders. And we say cash or other stock or other assets because sometimes you might give the shareholders something other than cash. But most of the time and for our purposes, we, we say we distribute cash, cash to the shareholders. Dividend reduces retained earning, which we'll talk about this in a moment. Okay, let's go back to our example here to see how dividend work. Remember this company makes uh, makes $250,000 in profit. Let's assume this company would like to distribute from this amount 100000 So they would like to distribute dividend because dividend comes out of retained, out of profit, out of profit. So they're going to, they want to distribute dividend, what we call dividend of $100,000. Let me take out those two lines. They're going to distribute dividend of 100000 And again, what's dividend is giving that money to the shareholders. Why? Because the shareholders invested in us. We made the profit as a company. The shareholder gets a cut of the profit. They're going to get 100000 So if we take net income minus the dividend, the company will keep 150000 I should have used a different figure. I'm going to use a different figure than 100000 Give me one moment, please. Let's assume the company decided actually to distribute. We're going to be generous here. The company decided to distribute $200,000. From the profit, they, dis they decided to distribute $200,000. What's left for the company is $50,000. We call this $50,000 retained earnings. And what is retained earnings? Is the earnings, the profit that the company kept. Although they made a profit of two fifty, dollars they distribute $200,000. What's left is $50,000. We call this retained earnings. Okay? So retained earnings is affected by three things. Revenues expenses and dividend so another way to say this another way to say this we can say 
retained earnings retained earnings dividend reduces retained earnings so what is retained earnings retained earnings is revenues minus expenses minus dividend equal to retained earnings so dividend reduces retained earnings because it's reducing the amount that we're keeping okay so but retained earning also but the dividend is coming out of profit so therefore revenues minus expenses equal to profit profit minus dividend equal to retained earning however just bear in mind dividend are not expenses so we don't we don't report dividend and expenses in the same place because expenses are cost to operate the business dividend are a way to reward the shareholders two different things so don't confuse expenses with dividend although they both reduce retained earning they're both part of retained earning so simply put if we look at this picture we can see that those three accounts here revenues expenses and dividend those three accounts are retained earnings account and we have common stock so simply put we can break equity into two two component common stock as a major component and i'm gonna put this in a different color and the other part is retained earnings so equity is really composed of two things retained earning and common stock however under retained earnings we have revenues expenses and dividend revenues increase retained earning which in turn increase equity expenses reduce retained earning which increase I'm sorry, reduces retained earning which increase re reduces equity and dividend reduces retained earning which in, in turn reduces equity now i can show you this full picture that i said i will come back to it and when i said stockholders equity and i cross it out stockholders equity is composed of two main component common stock is one and retained earning is two remember retained earnings is revenues minus expenses minus dividends so those three account form retained earning and this is basically what stockholders equity now what we're going to be doing in the next session is to look at transaction that put all this together but this is the overall what's called expanded accounting equation let me see if i can show you a picture of it because before we saw a picture of it let's look at this example so it's very important to understand how to classify items um, as issuance of stocks dividend revenues or expenses and indicate whether each increase or decrease stockholders equity so if i say you have a rent expense what is this is this revenue expense dividend or common stock hopefully you know it's an expense how does it affect equity it reduces equity decre decreases equity service revenue what type of an account service revenue is revenue and it increases equity dividend is obviously dividend and it reduces equity salaries and wages expense it it's an expense and it reduces equity and it reduces equity so in the next session we're, what we're going to be doing is looking at financial transaction that affect the accounting equation that affect the accounting equation if you have any questions any comments by all means email me if you're taking the class see me in class uh, complete your homework um, complete your quiz and if you're studying for your cpa exam always 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 study hard it's worth it